Too many spools and too many cables. Two annoying problems that any 3D printing enthusiast can probably relate to. In this video, I'll show off a solution that solves one and a half of these problems, using up a few spools and keeping a variety of cables neatly organised. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. If you're watching this, I'm willing to bet you probably have a lot of cables hanging around. While these days it looks like USB-C will be around for a while, I still need older cables for a variety of devices. While I could just store these cables in a drawer, or god forbid, the box, it feels like I'm never able to find the cable I need when I need it. A system like this can help keep everything organised by providing a specific place for specific cables. Once I'm done with the Mini-B cable, it goes back on the Mini-B card, not just thrown into a drawer. By wrapping the cables around the cards, it also keeps them from getting tangled. This designer came around from two things. First, I've been brainstorming uses for old filament spools for a few weeks now. I do really like the printed spool sorters, but I wanted to make a sorter that uses less filament, by using pre-existing containers instead. Spoilers, I haven't found anything I like yet, nothing fits quite nice. But anyways, reusing them was already on my mind when I saw the latest Prusa Mini Contest. Aside from their main long contest, Prusa is now doing mini contests every week or so. I've been really enjoying these since it makes me think outside of what I would usually design. Last week they released the Cable Organisation Mini Comp and immediately I jumped on the idea of reusing filament spools to organise small cables. The design is parametric to allow it to quickly be changed to suit any filament spool, since I know there's a few varieties and I didn't want to model manually for all of them. Parametric design is design where the components can be easily adjusted using a list of parameters you designate. The modelling process is overall similar, starting with a sketch that you then extrude. But instead of providing hard measurements while sketching, instead you provide variables and equations to achieve the desired part. The result of this is that just by changing a variable, the whole part modifies to accommodate the change. I'll go over what all the parameters do now. To begin with, the spool. There's only a few parameters to adjust here, those being the outer and inner diameter, the card thickness and the puzzle tolerance. Outer and inner diameter refers to the size of the spool you are using. Pretty self-explanatory. Inner diameter should be accurate, but outer diameter can be smaller or bigger if you prefer. I went fight with 5mm smaller than the actual diameter because I like how it looks with this border. Card thickness is also pretty self-explanatory. It controls the thickness of the grooves for the cable cards. Cards can only be so thick before they won't work, so watch the back or the inside of the spool. Finally, we have puzzle tolerance. The size of the puzzle pieces that connect the quarters together scale with the size of outer diameter, but you can adjust the tolerance with this variable. To make the cards themselves, there are quite a few more variables, those being label width, label height, card feet width, card spine width, cable width, cable height, height, and height tolerance. Label width and label height modify the size of the label slash handle. Pretty simple. Card feet width determines the width of the sides of the card. Card spine width determines the size of the spine of the card. If you are using a small cable, making this larger can make for a neater cable wrap. Cable width and cable height are for the notches to put cables into. I usually have width a little longer than height. If your cables are larger in size, you might need to adjust card feet width as well. Height is equal to the height of the inside of your spool, minus 2mm, but this calculation is done in the sketch. Width of the card is determined by some logic, so that it is proportional to any changes made to the size of the spool. This probably could have been its own parameter, but I decided to make it proportional to the spool since I like how that looks. If you want it smaller than the spool, you'll just have to adjust it to be smaller and export that individually. Anyways, with your parts modelled to your preferred size, it's time to print. Because these are plain, flat parts, you can use pretty low layer height. I use low quality on Cura and still get fine results. At 20% infill, the groove pieces take about an hour and a half each, and the card's 30 minutes, so the whole print comes out to around 20 hours. With the parts printed, it's time to assemble. Put two of the quarters in, clipped together. 
and then add another two one at a time to complete the ring. Add glue to the underside and then carefully, not like I'm doing here, push the pieces down. Wait for the glue to dry, then assemble the next four quarters, add some glue, then use a few cards to make sure the pieces are spaced properly. Add more glue around the edges and that's it, it's done. There's not much more to say really, it's a really simple but functional print. But yeah, that's pretty much everything for this video. If you want to try it out for yourself, the files are, as always, linked in the description. Thanks as always for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.